Hey guys, it's Trice here, and what you're seeing right now is a car body. To be specific, I'm going to build a realistic, original car in automation. Along with designing the vehicle, it will have a full-fledged interior, which I've never shown you guys on how I do it. Normally, to show you the finished vehicle, that go over the specs and all that. So let's start off with the panel material of this here vehicle. So for the panel material, we're going to start with a partial aluminum panel material with a monocoque chassis. And we'll probably do, for the sake of safety and everything, AHS steel. With the engine placement, we'll do front transverse with the front suspension set. Let's do a McPherson strut and the rear suspension will probably do a semi trailing arm suspension. For the engine, we we'll might as well probably do, maybe we do like a six cylinder engine, pretty small, and maybe like a 2.7 below a three liter engine. So let's start off the block, cast iron, can block material with the bore, let's order to stroke quite a bit up in here. Make this around a, like I said, like a 2.7 roughly. I increase the bore a little bit and the stroke. So let's do a 2.7 liters. So uh, the bore will be set to 85.1 millimeters and the stroke at 79 millimeters to get the engine size to 2,696 cubic centimeters or 2.7 liters. And we'll use a dual over cam four valve made out of aluminum. For the balance shaft, it doesn't even hurt to put a harmonic damper in here just in case the crankshaft explodes due to RPM stress. So for the crankshaft, let's do forged steel and then maybe do heavy duty forge and the piston set to maybe regular cast. For the compression, cam profile is good stuff. Let's do a 9.7 for the compression. Cam and springs, we'll have to adjust that later and we'll put some VVT only for the intake. Because we're in the 2000s, this claims VTEC up in here, but it's not really going to be VTEC. So we're not going to turbocharge this bad boy. So for the fuel stub, we're going to be using, uh, let's try a direct injection single throttle setup with a standard bit intake. With the fuel mixture, do 14.5 at a duty RPM, let's do 6,500 RPM. Lastly, for the exhaust, everything so short cast headers. I might do single exhaust, the exhaust diameter just to bump this up to a spidge to 2.25 inches or 57.1 millimeters. And we'll do a three way cat, no muffler, second reverse flow, and 178 horsepower right off the bat. And now we have the fuel octane in this engine. We're at a 79, so we got plenty to go up in here. So let's tune this bad boy up a little bit. We'll maybe get it around like 200, maybe 210 horsepower at the most. Especially for a small engine like this guy right here. So we're increasing the ignition time. I don't want to go a full blown advance because it's a little bit unrealistic for this type of engine, despite being a direct injection, really dropping down the octane limit for this here vehicle. Or this here engine, I meant. So still making decent amount of power. I did drop the cam profile a little bit and the springs and lifters so we can get a natural drop off with the high power band of the engine. And just noticing with the crankshaft stress that we got going here for the RPM, 9400 RPM, what if we get rid of the harmonic damper? Now we're at 7500. Not only that, if we get rid of harmonic damper, we're increasing horsepower by 5 tenths of our horsepower. So from 188 horsepower exactly, a little bit more in torque and 5 tenths in the horsepower. Not too bad. I think for realism's sake, I think I'm going to call this engine as is. So we're making 188.5 horsepower at 6100 RPM and the torque at 186.5 pounds feet of torque at 3900 RPM. Not too bad for a 2.7 liter V6 engine. Now let's give you a hear of this engine right now. Not too bad, even though the V6 is in this game, in terms of the engine sound, is on the mess side of things. And for the body of this vehicle, did I choose the crossover one right here? Is this it? Yep, so this is it. So for the drivetrain and everything, so we're gonna go with the fixtures a little bit. So for the drivetrain is for your vehicle, we're gonna probably gonna do a front wheel drive with an do an automatic maybe five speed with the top speed set to a hundred might have to 140 miles and 141. It seems fair enough. It'll probably realistic, we probably go up to 130, but whatever. So for the differentials, we might just do open as is. And now for the tires, like always, this day of age of 2009, radial, hard long life tires, the front and rear tire wood, I think 225 seems, no, 215s. 215s running on some, Jesus, 20 inch rims? What are we balling on some freaking 20s like we're on dubs or something? I might have to lower the rim size. Let's do 19s, lower this down to a 19. There, that's better. 
Now the brakes. Let's do solid disc, three piston up front of a size of 340 millimeters. I'm about to drop the brake force a little bit low. And same thing for the back, maybe a one piston of a 315 millimeters. I'm about to adjust this a little bit later, so that's good for now. Uh, now to the under tray to see your vehicle, so we can't really design an under tray. So let's do maybe none, even though it's not a high performance vehicle with the brake airflow at do 15 like always. And for the interior, we're going to see this later in the video, so it's pretty much going to be like a mid-trim mobile car because we got ourselves a V6 of this bad boy, not like a four-cylinder. So for the interior, standard interior with a standard CD player. And the driver aids, all the good stuff. So let's use variable hydraulic power steering with traction control and ABS brakes with standards, 2000 safety standards, and finally for the suspension. Let's use some progressive springs with gas metal tube dampers and passive sway bars. We'll start off with a normal preset. Where are we at? Understeering, it looks like. And the brake force is low, and we're understeering, and the car load capacity is low. Ah, damn, son. So what do we got in bro? Oh, gee. This is a certified sheesh moment. Can I lower this? We gotta go a little lower. Now up the brake force. Quite a bit up in here. So 340 seems okay with a three piston. See, no brake fade whatsoever. It might be a different story in Beam and G, but who knows. Let's, let's up the brake force and then lower the pad type to lower these two down at a healthy level. So let's do 32. Uh, a little bit more. All right, drop it to a 30. Why the hell is it still high up in here, folks? <laughs> They say they're going to lower the brake force with a new update with the engine overhaul update to like the lowest you could set is like a 30% or something. So keep lowering the pad type for God's sake. Rear brake force still too high. Oh, screw it, two drum brakes. How you like it? A lot. All right, since tuning the vehicle will probably take me some time to do so, I'll do this while I make this here time-lapse video of me trying to design the exterior as well as the interior of this here vehicle. So let's get ready to start off the design of your vehicle right now. So for the design of this car, this took me quite some time to get the exterior and interior designed in a single video. Before, I showed the final design while going over the specs, how I designed it, and then took it to Beam and G. With the front of the vehicle, I struggled with this for about 15 minutes to get something going. I searched up some SUVs to get me started, and I decided to slightly replicate a second gen Dacia Duster. I loosely copied the car's front styling with the custom headlights, grill, and trim pieces, including a black trim piece that goes on the bottom of the front bumper similar to a Chevy Equinox. I later added a couple of front vents and a pair of fog lights. Working on the side of the car, I added some door handles that are flush with the car, along with an embossed trim piece that I struggled to find for quite some time. I then added the name for this car, which will be called the Scepter by Dracus. I last used that brand on my custom engine sound video of using my own car and recording the engine for Beam and G. For the rear end, it's inspired by the GMC Acadia with the taillights and license plate holder. I use a couple of brake lights, an integrated turn signal, and top reverse lights, including a trim piece that goes over the plate holder with the Dracus badge over it. I also tuned the engine to make it more powerful than it is right now. I decided to make it a dual exhaust and added tubular headers. This makes the final power rating of 204.3 horsepower and 189.7 pounds feet of torque. Now for the interior, I thought about using the 1980s interior mod pack, but I wanted to change it up. Since I downloaded the modular dashboard pack a few weeks ago, I wanted to give that a try. I fiddled with this for about 20 minutes and decided to implement it in the car. It has a climate control system and a basic infotainment screen with a CD player. You can't get that with the old interior mod pack. I also decided to add a push button ignition system since there is a much room to put a key ignition system anywhere on the steering column. And I also did that since the car is built in the 21st century. Finally, I added some door trim pieces, armrests, window controls, interior door handles, and added the gray cloth material for all the seats. So after getting everything done with this car, here's what it came out. This is the 2009 Dracus Scepter EL. It's your typical crossover SUV just like any of the others on the market. With a decent engine, adequate top speed, 0-60, and track times, you could count on this car at any time. Alrighty, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this build, so about four and a half hours for this entire build here. From the exterior to the rear vehicle, the interior, all that good stuff. 
before we jump this into BMG Drive, despite our only two problems, such as the brake fade issues and the rear tires being quite wide for this vehicle, let's jump into BMG Drive to see what this car is all about. So here we are at the map of Italy with this here vehicle, the freaking GMC Acadia and Pardacia Swift or something like that, whatever that car is called, and there's a hopper behind me, so we're not gonna hold up this guy any longer, so for our base performance test with this here vehicle, we're gonna start off with the 0-60 to acceleration test, followed by the 62-0 to brake test, and lastly, a top speed run with this here vehicle. So let's get ready to accelerate and get out of this guy's way in 3, 2, 1, Gun it, go. So here we go. Zero to 62 in the first gear. To second gear, why does the red line show about 7,000 RPM? And zero to 62 at 7.57 seconds, a freaking Boeing of 391.10 feet. In automation, it claimed that the zero to 62, or technically zero to 100 a game, was like 8.5 seconds. It's kind of weird how automatic transmissions don't get any love in that game whatsoever. So brake test. 62 to 0 in 3.04 seconds of 127.65 feet. For an SUV like this, technically a crossover SUV if you really think about it, pretty much like the modern day car market, like it's GM, Ford, and etc. Seems pretty okay, there's a scintilla of both the braking distance and braking time-wise. Some realistic brakes and a realistic braking performance. So for a top speed run already in effect, I did a wheel spin launch back there, which gets us a worse time of an 8.04 seconds of 407.50 feet, so we're going to be dodging through traffic, so we're in the right-hand lane. There goes the Piccolina. At a speed of 100 miles an hour, Mr. Sunburst. It said that the top speed in, in, um, in Beam and G showed a, excuse me, automation. Okay, we got a gap here. Time out. All right, how can I manage this? Ooh, a little bit of overs here, pretty decent. So, uh, in automation, it showed a top speed of 138 miles per hour, even though I increased the performance of this engine. I went from like 189 horsepower to 207 horsepower by adding some tubular exhaust and dual exhaust too. It would basically tubular header to be specific. We are about to reach its top speed right about now. You're gonna cut me off, goddammit. So before we get into a tunnel, 141, 142 miles per hour, so top speed run is a success. Give me a car. Thank you very much, so crash into him as so, so we're gonna be stuck on the guardrail as the ES, uh, the regular SBR, I'm the ESBR, like the electric model, and Mr. Scintilla is hesitating. So looking at the aftermath destruction of your vehicle, so looking at the front of the vehicle, we got some severe front end damage, the left side seems okay, despite some creakiness going on right here. The rear, mm, I, and the right side, we got the tire bent inward. And I got back to normal SO. So right now, as this guy keeps honking at me, and this guy, and that guy, and these guys over there, let's find a time trial run and see how this vehicle really performs. So here we are at the bottom of the map of Circuit de Monaco, basically the Monaco Formula 1 track layout that we got here. It's a modded map that's been recently released in the Beam and G forums, which I'll link that in the description. So we're going to be doing two laps without a rolling start. So here's our start and finish line. So get ready to start a race at three. Two, one, can we go? No, I thought we were gonna have a, um, like an actual like launch going up here and drive, so the torque converter pretty much held us back like 1500 RPM, so whatever. All right, brake, into turn. Hmm, not bad, despite ECS being on, despite having uh, trash control and ABS this vehicle, so mm, put that to sport mode. So with this here track, I did, okay, let's try to slow down here, I did, Way slow down, god damn. I'll say I did race this in my recent videos of trying out a BBG app, a basic companion app, to drive your car using your phone. I used the FR17 car mod and did a couple laps around Monaco hastily with the BMG remote control app on my phone. If you were to find the app in the App Store, the Google Play Store, you can't even find it anymore. You pretty much gotta find it by downloading an APK file off the web somewheres. And overshoot my shot. 100 to 0 in 6.13 seconds of 433.29 feet. <laughs> I should probably do 100 to zeros next time, maybe. Let me know down below if I should do it next time. And again, despite all these hits from the right side of the vehicle, we do got some damage there. There's not a whole lot of, like, auto steering to the right or nothing stupid like that, where the steering alignment's been damaged to the point where we're just steering to the right no matter what. Once I get this first lap done, I'll probably get, like, an interior view by using the relative camera and just, like, reposition the camera as so. So, a couple more corners to go, and we'll do an interior view of... 
understeering, driving this car. All right, we get a lap time of 2 minutes, 30 seconds, 813 milliseconds. I kind of hit the wall a little bit earlier and again back there. So now we are auto steering somewhat hard to the right because of that. So this is an interior view to see your vehicle. Oh, we really use interior views despite having like, if I build an interior for this car, God damn it. I will say for vehicle builds, like if I have an interior for a car like this, I rarely do interior views for like driving around or for time trials, so I might as well make the most of it by getting an interior view of me driving this car because I spent four and a half hours on this vehicle. It's pretty much like an average for like building a car for being this game. It's like four hours, five hours, especially if it's an exterior and interior build, a full-fledged interior of a steering wheel, gauges, an infotainment system, and Odd auto CD player screen's a little bit glitching up in here. That sucks, but who looks at that anyways? All right, watch me understeer and play a freaking Carl Sainz up in here. I'm at a Charles Leclerc, I meant, where he crashed a classic Nicky Lauda F1 car back at that turn there. So a final lap time, 2 minutes, 21 seconds, 136 milliseconds of a total time of 4 minutes, 51 seconds, 949 milliseconds. Not that bad. So here is a crash. It, everything as is. God damn, the dash exploded, and I'm still in my seat. Sheesh, man. Okay, free roam. And I killed the engine as so, so the dashboards exploded. The modular dashboard, which is a new mod in the automation Steam Workshop, which finally, they finally put some new dashboard mods, especially making your own, and it's modernized, not like a classic 80s dashboard. And can I get this... Uh... Stuck somewheres? Alright, I'm good now, despite throwing that bad boy up in the air, so we got a shank up in here at... Yeah, more loose polygons, more shanks in the rear of the vehicle, so I'll swear about the vehicle. It helped its structural integrity, but it's undriveable because the engine is destroyed. So lastly, for the final part of the video, let's jump on down to Leap of Dev to be like YBR by going up the top of the ramp, top of the mountain, all that good stuff, and crash ourselves down to the little lake there. So take you to the top right now. Alright, got the vehicle as so, accelerate as so, so a little bit of a downhill into second gear and a speed of, let's see, 57 miles per hour, almost 62 miles an hour triggered the 0 to 62 timer on the top there. We probably got a little bit of a better time, worse time, who knows. And just start of oil, and just start of your mother. Alright, let's see what we're gonna get here. 60 times slow-mo, it's probably gonna be an awkward crash because we're gonna be on a slope, so 16 to a hundred times. Okay, hundred times. Here we go. Hundred times so much to the front of the vehicle. We still got a little ways to go. So here is a collision right now. So we're going to ramp ourselves down the bottom or the uh, side of the cliff face here and our bottom wheels make contact. Not too surprising. So 16. Anything more surprising? The answer is no, full time. Oh, debris, all the freaking pieces. There's a tire in my roof. A tire is in my roof up in here, folks. The engine is destroyed because main engine broke. It's full time and all the way. Ooh, that's a heavy hitter right there. So there goes all the debris pieces. It's going metal up in here, folks. So splash we go. Way down to the bottom of the lake right here. So there's the vehicle as so. So let's not try to F7 it because before, if you try to F7 it, oh, let's lower the strength. F7 a car nowadays with the 0 0.25 update. If you were to F7 it, then the car would basically respawn itself. And I can't really show you the damage as this. So where's my car? All right, got the car down and we got a super duper loose polygon pointing... Um, where can I get a vantage point? Miles of the Sky piercing the atmosphere up in here, folks. We got this piece becoming the frickin' atmosphere piercer 4,000, folks. So, it's also generating a shadow. <laughs> That's cool. So, the vehicle is completely destroyed. We got our two brake lights working. Our turn signal. Oh, yeah, the, the turn signal is part of the light right here. Reverse lights are okay. And the rest of the vehicle, let's see. What the hell are the lights? Where are they at, though? On the bottom. Fair enough. So that'll do it with automation and BMG drive with the Dracus Scepter EL. Despite taking over four hours to make this car, in terms of general styling, it seems average for a crossover SUV, even though it's a hybrid between a Dacia and a GMC. 
with a touch of original styling. For the performance of this car, it isn't that bad as it's powered by a small V6 engine with nimble handling. I'd say this isn't that bad of a car that tries to be realistic as possible. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos like this in the future, and also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries rising up, and signing out.